using your guitar pedals in your DAW, like plug-in effects, is a really satisfying experience. Now, if you're a guitar player and you've got a little home recording setup and maybe you don't have a budget for outboard gear, it's likely you've got a bunch of pedals lying around. Well, did you know you can hook them up to your DAW and use them like outboard gear and come up with some really cool customized effects? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that today. And in doing so, I'm gonna feature two really cool pedals from Color Tone. I've got their Lo-Fi Delay and the Spring Reverb 2. We're getting a little old school today. Why don't you join me? Hey there, as the title says, I am Dan, the self-proclaimed lonely rocker. Thank you so much for joining me today. So this is a video that I've actually been wanting to make for a long time, but I just needed the right pedals to do it. Well, enter Color Tone, who are actually sponsoring this video. Uh, but I think they were expecting a review video perhaps, but we do things our own way here on the channel. But I have to tell you that these pedals lend themselves uh, to the technique that I wanna show you today. Very analog, vintage style pedals that really sound awesome. You'll see what I mean when we uh, start tracking these things. Anyways, we can take you know, mono signals from a reverb pedal and we can turn it into stereo effects. Same thing with delay pedal. Uh, you can use whatever pedals that you have lying around, but if you are interested in these pedals, I will put a link in the description for more information and definitely worth checking out because I really had a lot of fun with these. All right, let's get it hooked up and hear how this all sounds. <laughs> So the biggest advantage I think of using guitar pedals for your effects is hands-on control. It becomes an extension of your performance. Now, don't get me wrong, I love plugins. I've got tons of plugins in my system and they do things that are not possible in the physical world, but I love performance. And when using effects like this and recording them in real time, you can express yourself in different ways. You can accent different parts of your guitar parts or really whatever instrument you wanna put through this. It's a very organic process and really helps you create some very unique and custom effects. So I wanna show you a mix example where all of the effects are handled by these two pedals. And uh, on the other side, I will show you how to hook it up and I'll give you some tips and techniques you can use if you wanna try this for yourself. Ah, I just love the tails on those effects. Sounds so beautiful. All right, so I wanna help you get the setup. Now, there's a multitude of scenarios depending on your setup, depending on your audio interface, but regardless, you need an audio interface, obviously, to do this. Now, if you only have a simple audio interface with two outputs, generally those two outputs are gonna be connected to your speaker monitors. So if that's all you have, it's okay. You can still play the game, uh, but you're gonna have to borrow one of the outputs, which means disconnecting your speaker. So I'd recommend working on headphones while you record the different effects. And yes, we're gonna be recording the pedals and we wanna do them individually. We're not gonna, you can create a series of, you know, daisy chain of pedals and you can record them all if you want, but you're gonna lose control of the individual effects. So we're gonna do multiple passes of our reverbs and our delays, and then you can mix them later on. So just borrow an output if all you have is a two channel output, just to get this set up. And then once you've recorded all of your effects, you can just put your speaker monitor back in and get to mixing. So let's start with that simple scenario where we take the output 
of, uh, from our audio interface. We're going to plug that into our pedal or the first pedal in our series of pedals. And then the last output from the last pedal is going to come back into an available input here on our audio interface. Now, if you have multiple outputs, you could set up multiple chains. You can have different pedals and different loops, but just want to keep this simple. Now, one little problem here is that if this is all you have and you don't have any other equipment, the, the level coming out of your audio interface is a line level and your pedals generally expect uh, instrument level. So if you actually had a DI that could step it down from line level to instrument level, you would put that in between. You would take the output into the DI, take the instrument level output into your pedals and then the pedals back in. That would be the most ideal situation. Now what I do, I have an Axio interface. This is actually the Axio one, but similarly has this amp out. This is a reamping audio interface. So if you set up for reamping, then you would take the reamp output into your pedals and that is the most ideal situation. So, but if you just don't have that, you can experiment with what you have. Just be really careful with those levels because you're gonna find they're really, really hot and you can bring them down uh, inside your DAW. I don't know if there's some kind of impedance mismatch or something like that, but that's uh, above my pay grade. By the way, if you're like me and you need some visual aids, I have PDFs of these setups and more available for you to download on my Patreon. Link is in the description. I use Logic, but the steps will be similar in most DAWs. Identify the track you want to affect and assign the output of the track to match the signal chain you made with your pedals. In my case, the mono output 5 is connected to my pedals, so I will select that. Then create a new track and select the input that your pedals are plugged into and make sure you are monitoring the input signal. Once you've completed setting up the loop, you'll be able to hear the effect coming in from the pedal. So once everything is set up properly and routed correctly and you're hearing uh, the pedals coming back into your project, you're really only limited by your imagination and the functionality on your pedals. Now, I just wanna give you an idea of my setup here. I recorded everything with my Sir Classic T Deluxe Limited Edition and I recorded those DI. So in my project, I have all the DI tracks and then I reamped all of those tracks through my Angle Powerball 2. So in essence, I have all of the DI tracks and I also have, we'll call it the finished tone. Now, here is where you've got options. Now, in my case, I decided to use the DI tracks to run through the pedals because I just wanted the purest representation of these pedals so we can hear the color and saturation that was created by the pedals themselves. You might be recording your amp direct so that you've got amp tone in your project. You can send the amp version, uh, the amp tone version through the pedals, uh, whatever you want to do. The fun part about this is that you can experiment. But once I had all of my effects recorded, I bypassed all my DI tracks, so I blended those uh, di affected DI tracks with the finished tone. And I think it just gave me a nice balance of, uh, you know, real tone from the guitar and amp, and then these pristine effects. Again, you're not locked in. Now, uh, one thing I do want to note about my pedals here, so I am recording each individual pedal uh, one at a time. We're not recording them together because that would defeat the purpose. Uh, but I did add a boost pedal at the head of my chain here. Just gave me some additional gain control on the desk. I could have done it within the DAW, but certainly it was an advantage having it on the desk. Um, not a prerequisite, but just an idea if you've got a preamp pedal or just gives you some volume control uh, right beside your pedals, just with something handy to do. I just wanted to mention that. So there's so many different things that you can experiment with. I just want to give you a couple of ideas because once your pedals are hooked up, like I said, just have fun and see what uh, you come up with. Now, a delay is probably the trickiest one uh, to get working because the timing of that delay is imperative, right? So what I did was I identified the segment that I wanted to add an effect to or the delay to. And I set the end point for my record section um, many bars ahead of the actual point where I wanted it to kick in. So once I hit record, I had a bunch of bars just to get the tap tempo going. Uh, the splash button acts as a tap tempo. So I'd hit record and then I would tap the tempo that I wanted the delay to follow. Uh, I actually did two different passes. The first one, I did a quarter note delay. So I was just tapping quarter notes and I had the metronome on obviously in the, in the DAW. And then I did a second pass where I set it to half notes. But the difference is with the second one, a great feature on the lo-fi delay is this wet dry modes. So in dry mode, the delay is only activated when you hold the splash button. So timing up that sort of half note delay, there's a little part of that guitar riff that I anticipated, hit it just before so the delay would catch it and then I would let go and then it would give me a repeat. And uh, I did that all throughout the section. And then in mix, I panned the two delays left and right. And uh, like I said, once you've recorded all of your different effects, you can treat e these tracks just like an instrument. So I'd add a little compression, a little EQ, so it would, they would all sit nicely together. So let's take a listen to uh, what that sounds like. So 
important tip you need to know when recording pedals is uh, a pedal that has a dry, wet mix. Typically, when you plug your guitar into it, you'll get your parameters set the way you want, and then you use the blend knob to get a good mix of guitar and effect. Now, what I did with both the delay and the reverb is that I set the dry, wet mix all the way up because I want to get as much as that reverb as possible because I will be mixing it in the project. So there's no sense backing off on it. If you don't have enough, you can't add, but if you have too much, you can bring in back in the mix. But a consideration is something like a reverb that has like a decay setting. If you set the decay too high, you might have a runaway reverb that's just gonna get noisy. So I would get the reverb working the way you want it, and then just crank the dry wet mix all the way up and make sure you get uh, as much of that effect as possible. So when you mix it back, you'll have a lot, a lot of latitude uh, to get that working. So I did pretty much the same thing with the Spring uh, Reverb 2. Uh, but the nice thing about this particular reverb, there's sort of like a dual layer pedal. If you hold down uh, the, the button here um, for a couple of seconds, the second red light on the left will turn on, and then the four knobs are now controlling the second layer of features. And there's a great modulation uh, feature in this reverb pedal. So what I did was, is I did sort of a typical, more in regular reverb for one side. And then on the second one, I played with the modulation so I can get a really cool shimmer effect. And then same thing like I did with the delay, and the splash feature on the uh, lo-fi delay. With this one, as I played with the intensity of the shimmer effect, so I sort of anticipated certain sections where I wanted to feel that shimmer kind of come in, I dialed it in, I dialed it out, all doing it freestyle, right? And tried, I did a couple passes until I got it just right. And when you listen to it, it's really, really subtle in the mix, but it almost sounds like kind of violin sort of fading in and out. Really, really beautiful. But those two reverbs working together uh, in the mix, I think works really, really well. But let's take a listen to that. So something important that you're going to need to do once you have all of your affected tracks recorded into your project is you want to check that everything's in sync because there is potentially a latency issue uh, depending on your system. I mean, that round trip, you know, out of your system, through your pedals, and then back in. I actually worked in low latency mode in Logic, uh, but it still wasn't perfect. So what you really need to do is put your cursor on the first frame of your dry guitar part and then zoom in and look at your, you know, your reverb or your delay or whatever you recorded and make sure that first frame is lining up perfectly with your cursor there because, um, like I said, there is some latency and with delays, if it's a little bit off, you're going to notice that. So I'd go in and correct everything before you start mixing. And then from there, you know, like I said, you can treat it like another instrument, mix it how you see fit. And there's just so many different possibilities. Anyways, let me give you a couple more examples so now you understand the process and I'll show you a couple other sections, mainly in solo, so you can get a better idea of what I did with the different parts in this song. So I think this is the most fun that I've had with pedals in a long time. This was a fun experiment and definitely something that I'm gonna keep pushing and trying different things because I love experimenting. You know, plugins are super convenient and we get stuck in using presets and things like that, but this is a, a fun way 
to create your own effects and get creative with your effects and come up with something really unique. I think experimentation is a bit of a lost art these days, but really if you have a home studio, you have so many options. And I hope this just gives you some ideas of things you can try. Yeah, it's a little bit more effort to get a reverb and a delay, but I think it's very satisfying when you come up with something that you really enjoy. Now, speaking specifically of these two pedals, I love vintage style effects anyway. So tape-based delay effects, just do it for me all the time. But this particular pedal with you have two independent delay engines, uh, the hi-fi and lo-fi modes. So you got a couple of types of delays. Uh, the wet mode and the dry mode. I like that dry mode where I can use the splash button and be expressive with the delay. It works in a live setting, absolutely. And in this application, I love being able to anticipate certain moments and create delays. Uh, and I think it's just very expressive. And I think that works really well in a track. So lots to offer on the lo-fi delay and the spring reverb too. Uh, at first, you know, I was thinking spring reverb, what am I going to do with that? But wow, you got some really lush uh, reverbs here with long decay times. And that second layer of uh, parameters and those shimmers are so beautiful. They just offered so much and, you know, creating those beautiful stereo delays uh, really, really worked well in this situation. Really, really impressed how both of these pedals performed. But I'd be excited to hear about some of your experiments. Uh, let me know in the comments. Man, talk about getting the right pedals for the job. I mean, I really enjoyed working with these pedals. Now, whether you're going to use them in the traditional way or in the way I demonstrated in this video, uh, these are very, very well built and they just sound amazing. I'm so happy that I got these. And I really want to thank Color Tone uh, for sponsoring this video and allowing me to make whatever I wanted to make. Um, I really feel that these were the right pedals for the job. They just had all the control and the quality that I would look for in a studio effect. So uh, definitely worth checking out. I'll put a link in the description and uh, see what Color Tone has to offer. Anyways, if you do try this technique yourself, I would love to hear from you. Perhaps you have something to offer into this discussion. That's what the comment section is for. But if you did like this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You made it all the way to the end. I'd love to know who you are. Perhaps you can let me know in the comments. I've got another video waiting for you right here if you want to check it out. And if you check the description, there's all sorts of ways to support the channel. Affiliate links, I'm on Patreon, and I've got merch. It's all in the description. And I hope to see you again in another video.